the things you probably have to deal with, and some of you may know if you live in especially forests or wooded areas, uh, and in particular areas that have been logged and there's a lot of slash piles, is uh, dealing with termites. And uh, up here we have dry wood termites. Uh, I'll put a link down below to them, but they are um, a pesky little thing that loves to eat wood, as you probably know. So one of the things we wanted to do was um, treat for those before we finish the building uh, inside. Uh, when you have open frame construction like this, it's the best time to treat the wood. Uh, if I had thought about it and it had worked out better, I would have treated the wood as we built. Uh, we'll probably do that in the future. Um, it's pretty easy to treat. Uh, it just sprays on. Uh, we use a product called Boracare. I'll put a link down at the bottom. Um, and it's uh, you, you spray it on and it absorbs into the wood and just kind of disappears. Uh, but it's like something termites absolutely hate. Also deals with uh, wood boring beetles uh, as well as carpenter ants. So um, I'm going to spray the entire inside of the building today as well as all the planks outside uh, that are for the ceiling and some of the, the decking that we have. Um, between August and I think September or October, I think October is when dry wood termites tend to hatch. So you'll see flyers around. We had a I think it was this time last year we were sitting outside and just this hatch happened and there was just flying termites everywhere. It was crazy. Uh, but we did have that happen while we were gone. Um, so we could see some of the uh, wood in the area, you know, new colonies starting. Uh, we did have one board inside that we found that uh, had termite signs in it. So again, I don't know if that was uh, already there or it came in, but we'll treat that board especially. So anyways, it's a good time to catch it. Uh, we can do the whole interior of the building while it's open. Uh, there's not much stuff in here uh, and then it'll be treated and it lasts for decades. Then we'll get the walls sealed up and stuff and that'll help as well. So that's uh, today's big project. We had other plans, but um, this came up last weekend. We were like, oh yeah, we should probably deal with this, especially before we get insulation and, and walls in. So uh, while it's open frame, it's a good time to do it. There are many ways to treat stuff that's already built. So you can read on Boracare's site about how to do that. Uh, there's different types of termites we're dealing up here, I think with mostly um, the dry wood kind, which fly to the next colony uh, as opposed to burrow through the ground. So. Uh, I will crawl under the building and spray anything that's not pressure treated. Any wood that's treated with pressure treat or painted or anything like that is yeah, usually pretty safe. Stuff with glue in it like uh, plywoods and T111 is totally fine. They won't eat that. So I'm mostly worried about the big beams and, and the joists and stuff. So we'll get all that sprayed and move on. So we're going to mix the Boracare uh, at about five to one, maybe a little less. Uh, which is the recommendation for basically prevention. So spraying all of the wood that, uh, you know, doesn't have any problems right now with that. Uh, that soaks in. Uh, you only have to do one coat and that soaks in and it's lasts for a couple decades apparently. So plus all the walls will get sealed up. So at some point it won't matter too much, but uh, it should work pretty good. For the one or two boards we've seen that do have, uh, look like they have termites in them um, that have just started, we're going to do a one-to-one, -one, which is a, uh, kill them dead mode uh, we'll spray those boards with a one-to-one -one, and that will um, pretty much ensure that those uh, die off before they rehatch again so uh, fortunately we were lucky we only have like one that I found so far I'm gonna search the up in the trusses and the ceiling uh, a little bit better but so far only that one board looks like it on the inside we did have a couple of the ceiling planks that we laid out here to dry they were stacked on the trailer uh, and they kind of got wet in the middle, um, which termites do love. So there was a few in there uh, that had just barely dumped out some babies. So little tiny guys running around. Uh, so we spread those out to dry. Uh, and then I'm going to spray all those. Um, the ones that the couple that did have a few termites in them, I'm going to spray with the one to one. But the rest I'll do with the five to one. And uh, they should be good to go. And they're super thin. They're only five eighths inch. So they'll uh, absorb really quick. But the... Uh, Boracare soaks in at least an inch, I guess, uh, on each side, so uh, you should be pretty good. It's really thick. Probably about the consistency of maple syrup. So let's spray the outside boards. We have a couple of the two by sixes that we had custom cut at the lumber yard that uh, uh, I'm gonna spray as well before they go on the deck. We'll spray the, the existing decking as well uh, when we get to that. But we're gonna do these outside boards first before we move inside where it'll be a little bit more tricky.
Since those boards are only 5 16 inch thick, I'm only going to spray the one side. On the 2 by 6s I'll probably flip those over after they dry and spray the other side to make sure we get those completely penetrated. So, all those are done. So now we can do the inside of the building and then uh, hopefully this project will be over. We can stay away from the nasty termites. So on this board, here's how you can tell. You can see these uh, little ruts that get dug. They dig just below the surface and they dig tunnels uh, where they put all their stuff and their eggs and all that crap. So you can see boards, uh, or if you do see boards that have these little uh, channels dug through them and before the sawdust falls out, all you'll see is a little kind of white line. Um, and then as the sawdust breaks up, it'll eventually fall out. And then there's actually a slot or kind of a gap in the, in the wood. Uh, so this board here is the one that uh, we did have damage in. And we don't know if it was, they were already in it when we built or if they got in at some point after that. But so far, this is the only board I found. Uh, but as we spray it, we'll keep looking. And they will travel from one board to the next. So, you know, I'll double spray all these boards nearby because um, they'll travel in the wood down through the next frame piece or up through the next frame piece. They're super destructive that way. Quick update on the uh, solar system. Uh, most everything's wired. I have a few more things to do in here. I'll show you in a second. Uh, and then inside the building, all of the outlets are wired. Uh, a couple of the light circuits are pulled. All of the DC wiring's pulled as well as the AC, uh, most of the AC. Uh, the only thing really left is a couple lighting circuits I need to run. So we'll get those done probably here in the next weekend. But uh, everything else is terminated and running. So actually we have DC wired USB ports throughout the building. We have uh, obviously AC outlets wired throughout the building. And like I said, one light circuit running, um, which was kind of a test to make sure it worked. Uh, but anyways, on the inside here, we'll run through this real quick and show you the update. There's only uh, two things left to uh, work on. Both of these panels are uh, wired now. I do have like, you know, an actual good connector and wire run for the one. Uh, I do need to replace this one. It was just a temporary uh, wire I ran, but I'm gonna put an actual better cable and plug on that. But everything's come down, uh, as you saw before, everything comes down from the ceiling or either in the building or up on the roof. Uh, we have the main solar controller uh, right here, uh, which runs the two largest banks. And then we have a smaller one up there that's running the furthest away bank. DC converter, 12 to 20, or 24 to 12 volts. So the system is 24 volts. This knocks it down to 12. So it can feed over here to hit the DC cabling uh, at 12 volts. Uh, up on the top left there is the uh, Blue Smart charger, which is the generator connection. So down here there's a wire running in that from the outside, uh, there's a plug right here, it's all waterproof. And then uh, you can plug the generator straight into that. And then that fires that thing up. So you can see it's not powered now. It is wired to the system, however that doesn't turn on until it actually gets power from the AC side. Uh, but I did power it up and tested it. It ran everything. Uh, it was awesome. The system shut the solar down automatically and just completely ran off the generator while it uh, was on. Um, and that allowed me to configure it into the system. So that test worked great. So if we ever have issue where we don't have enough solar or we need to charge because there's a problem with the solar, generator's all set to go. Uh, we have two inverters. We have uh, this one and this one. Each one feeds a different panel here. Instead of going to one really large one, it was hard to find in this size to find uh, inverters from Victron that were 120 volts. Uh, most of them are 240 and I didn't want to deal with that. Uh, and the other option was to go to really, really huge ones, which I didn't want to do either. So I just grabbed two of these, uh, which works great. I don't know that we need it, but I really wanted to spread the load out a little bit just so if we expand in the future, uh, if we had a bathhouse or whatever, we'll have enough power to, to deal with that. Obviously the batteries you've seen in other videos, these are the Renogy 200 amp hour and they are wired uh, in series in pairs and then parallel across all three pairs. Uh, this is the Victron DC shunt. Uh, this thing is freaking awesome. It man, uh, monitors the battery system as well as all the power going in and out of it in every possible way so I can get a lot of data. Maybe in this video or the next one, I'll uh, try to get some footage of the online system, uh, how amazing it is, how much data I have. And then lastly, this is the Servo GX, which is the smarts behind the whole thing. Uh, that you can see every device is wired to it. Some devices only use Bluetooth, so they, this thing has its own Bluetooth network. So some things like the Blue Smart Charger will just connect via Bluetooth. It's not hardwired. Um, the hardwired devices I get a lot more data out of, which is pretty cool. So everything I could hardwire, I did. 
PV combiner from the panels, uh, the main two banks up on the roof, combine here, and then feed this guy. As you can see, everything is fused. I use Windy Nation fuses. I'll link those below. Uh, I also have switches on things. So inverters have switches inside them, so I don't need switches on those. But if I want to shut the whole battery bank off, I can here. If I want to shut off uh, the small charge controller, I can here. Well, I need to put some screws back in that. And if I want to shut off the big uh, charge controller, I can do it right here. The system does give me the ability to shut it off electronically, um, but this is nice to be able to actually physically break connections if I need to. Lastly, over here, we've got the Starlink uh, PoE device down here, and then we've got the router, and then this is a little PoE switch that's uh, DC powered. Um, it hangs on these DIN rails. Uh, there's the Raspberry Pi that runs a bunch of stuff, and there is actually, I have a DIN rail kit to mount the Raspberry Pi to the DIN rail, so I gotta, gotta do that as well. So you know, nothing critical, just fun stuff to do. Just using a cell phone today, so uh, sorry if the quality is not quite as awesome uh, as it normally is, because you know, it's so awesome. Uh, last couple things that need to be done. Uh, I do need to wire the battery balancer. I need to get that done. I might try to do that right now. Um, doesn't look too complicated, but that does allow the system to self-balance how it's charging across all the batteries. Well, I had time, so I just finished it up. So I got the battery balancer all wired in. Uh, it has a positive and negative connection just to the normal positive and negative side of the system. It then has a common line which connects to one of the sets of series batteries. So uh, the shunt here, the smart shunt, has a common that connects to the first set of batteries in the center. And then the battery balancer connects to the one at the other end of the string. So I'll see if I can throw a diagram up maybe uh, to show what that looks like. But um, that then, uh, when the system's in charging mode, the battery balancer will look for differentials of about 50 millivolts. And if it sees that, it will begin a balancing process across all of the sets of batteries. Uh, when the system goes out of charging mode, meaning solar's down, charging's down, it's you know basically nighttime, uh, and there's no generator on, then it just turns itself off. So it's not consuming any power when it's, um, or very, very little power when it's off. Uh, last thing I need to wire, which should be pretty quick, I just haven't done it yet, is uh, this thing, which is a battery protect. So this sits between the batteries and the converter up here that goes from 24 to 12 volts, which then feeds the fuse box. Uh, the go good thing about this, you can set it to monitor any specific voltage, high or low, and what it'll do is if it the system reaches that, it'll actually break the connection and shut the entire DC system off, um, which is great because the thing that'll kill you a lot of times is DC loads are running and you'll just run batteries completely dead and not even realize that happened. So the ability for the system to shut the whole DC off uh, is great. So you can also set this up to be on a switch. You can put it on a relay. You can also remote control it. So uh, I'll have that set up to mostly be automated. Um, so if some DC loads get, get left on and there's a problem with the solar not charging, we don't kill batteries, but highly doubt it'll get used, but it wasn't very expensive and I thought it's a great protection device. So we'll get that wired in. I think that's it. Uh, once those two things are done, all that's left is, like I said, is the few circuits in the house we got to pull, and then we'll be done with power completely. Uh, and like I said, I would get right to it, and I did. So uh, this guy's now wired in. So I had to reprogram it, uh, which is really easy. You just short these two pins together here, or you could put it on a switch, but you only have to really program it once. Uh, once it detected everything was 24 volts, then it was all happy and good. So uh, it's 24 volts in, check 24 volts out, and then obviously the converter is still now 24 in, 12 out. Uh, and so this is all ready to go. So uh, it should protect everything automatically. Um, you know, that if I want to, I can wire a switch into it. I did was just reading the manual. I did read you can actually, instead of hooking these to the high voltage, uh, higher voltage lines, you can actually hook these to the uh, relay on the inverters as well. So the, they can shut the inverters off too, um, which is pretty interesting. I'll have to think about that. But anyways, that's all done. That's it. Everything is now completely wired. All we have left is to pull some wires from in the building and connect them into here, and we'll be done with electrical. So super close, probably another weekend. Well, I got a whole bunch done this weekend. Uh, it's starting to rain now, and I was working on the deck outside. As you can see, I got all soaking wet, but it's nice and warm out, so that was fine. But got some more decking boards in. Some of that wood we got from the uh, saw, local sawmill, those uh, two by sixes that we helped plane down. Uh, I got probably about third of those, well, probably half of those installed uh, on the front deck. So uh, we'll keep going on that, but now I'm all wet and getting tired and sore from working all weekend. So I'm gonna head out, but uh, we did get all of the spraying done for the termites and uh, we did finish up all of the solar stuff. Uh, so I'll put all this together in a video as you probably just watched and uh, share it with you guys. And uh, probably next time we'll do some more work on the deck and finish the inside wiring. 
uh, which will be huge. We'll be uh, well on our way then. So anyways, thanks for watching.